everybody in the house will die from carbon monoxide poisoning. Think of the children. So you'd rather have a wood stove that you leave running and then go to sleep? Well, what I think it is is that it's a, it's a problem with vocabulary. I think people are thinking, because we keep saying, what we mean to say is rocket mass heater, and what we are saying be, is rocket stove, because a, a rocket mass heater has evolved from the oh, rocket stove. Okay. And so then they're like, they're, they're they thinking don't have a that we've got this little it's camp it's stove in the middle of the house, and we're burnt. we've got a, basically an open fire in the house, and all the exhaust is going into the room. So yeah. I think what's important is is that this is on us. This is our fault. We keep saying rocket stove, slap, and we gotta say rocket mass heater. Okay. And it's like if we say rocket mass heater, and they're like, if they're if, then it gives they can have a different image than a rocket stove, which is dumping exhaust into the room. Well, I mean, I've heard people go, well, what about the bench? You have to wrap up those pipes really good in the bench with tape and stuff like that to make sure that it won't off gas through. The masonry somehow, and um, that is a real that is a concern that I've heard over and over and over again. And what I've learned is is that when you have a chimney that runs, that's all a negative pressure area anyway. So if you if I was to take a drill and drill a hole all the way through the bench and all the way through the pipe, and when you first start the stove, you might see a little bit of smoke out that hole, but as soon as that chimney kicks into action, if I hold some incense or something next to that hole, it'll be going inwards. I mean. This is not a problem. Uh, may I say something about that too? Yeah, please. Um, I heard, uh, I started with a Norwegian uh, wood stove, and it, uh, it uh, had the, the name to be an airtight wood stove. And I've read a book about wood stoves and so on, and the, the guy who wrote the book said, an airtight wood stove is not airtight. Imagine. The stove is cold, nothing uh, has been burning there for 24 hours or something. You grab the cat by his neck, shove him in the wood stove and close the door and close uh, the, the area. That will the cat suffocate? That depends. If you open the door, just before you open the door is going to be a supposition of both states at the same time. Yeah. This is not yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was a special kind of cat you were talking about. Schrodinger's. <laughs> but um, you see, what, what the stove isn't airtight, not at all. So what are you thinking about airtight? The wood stove, the beautiful enameled, uh, whatever, pricey wood stove, wasn't airtight, so it was uh, 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 operating under pressure. Of course, be because the chimney was pulling on it. I think it's foolish to operate any appliance that creates any sort of gas without a CO detector and, mm -hmm. and, so and a smoke detector in the building. Um, and we all live with a certain degree of foolishness. How much foolishness do we tolerate? I think of the children. I think of how much time they spend without me because I'm at work making that extra money to pay for propane. I think that's a significantly, that allowing them to watch TV is a significantly higher risk to their overall usefulness as human beings than, than whether or not there's a, little, there's, uh, uh, there's a risk of CO from the thing heating the uh, the building um, put a CO detector in and I do think of the children if you like this sort of thing come on out to the forums at permies.com where we talk about rocket mass heaters homesteading and permaculture all the time mm -hmm.